My name is Kate and I am here today to talk to you about comma splices. As an English teacher, comma splices are the most common writing error that I see. And I think that's because we see them a lot in casual writing, uh, which makes them hard to avoid. A lot of times in creative writing, an author might use a comma splice to indicate that a character's thoughts are racing. Um, but in academic writing, you don't want your thoughts to be racing. You want your thoughts to be clear. And you want your reader to understand how different thoughts are related. And a comma splice can confuse that. But what is a comma splice? A comma splice occurs anytime you have two independent clauses that are separated by a comma. An independent clause is a part of a sentence that has a subject, what the sentence is, or who the sentence is about, a verb, what the subject is doing, and that expresses a complete thought. So, Picard was the best captain. That is an independent clause. Cisco is my favorite. That's also an independent clause. So we have two independent clauses separated by a comma. That's a comma splice. The reader might be a little bit confused as to how these two thoughts are related. There are three ways that you can fix a comma splice. The first way is to take your comma and to replace it with a period. Now we have two complete thoughts, two complete sentences, no comma splice. This is fine. This is a perfectly acceptable fix. But it's a little boring, and in my experience, when students make a comma splice, it's because they want those thoughts to be connected. They don't want to separate them. So, a second choice that you have to fix a comma splice is to use a semicolon. Now you have one sentence. These thoughts are connected. This is, again, grammatically correct. No issues or concerns here. A semicolon is used anytime you have two independent clauses that are so closely related that they shouldn't be their own sentence. But the semicolon doesn't give us any information about how these two thoughts are related. You're sure that your reader will understand that. Your third choice for fixing this, and to give your reader a little bit more information on how these two thoughts are related, is to turn one of your two independent clauses into a dependent clause. The easiest way to do this, we go back to having a comma there, is by adding a conjunction at the beginning of the second clause. Picard was the best captain, but Cisco is my favorite. The conjunction tells us how these two thoughts are related. It also turns the second clause into a dependent clause. It no longer expresses a complete thought on its own. It needs the first clause to help it make sense. You can also do this by adding information to the beginning of this sentence. So we could say, even though Picard was the best captain, Cisco is my favorite. Now again, this is an, a dependent clause. It needs the rest of the sentence to make sense. But we've given a little bit more information to tell our reader how these two thoughts are related. One side note, however, is not a conjunction, although it's oftentimes used as one. Picard was the best captain, comma, however, Cisco is my favorite, is still a comma splice. So don't think. Comma splices, two independent clauses separated by a comma. They're confusing. They make your, your writing feel rushed. Instead, use a conjunction, use a period, or use a semicolon. Thanks.